Hi guys, my name is Vanessa Smedley and I'm a painter. Wow, there's really a, a lot of blue in this scene right now. Hmm. But that's okay, we're gonna be using a lot of blue in the painting that we're doing today. So today we are gonna paint a watercolor of this lovely scene from Malibu, California. And the name of the beach is Leo Carrillo Beach and I used to go there, um, I, I mean, maybe once a year for quite a while and I really like it a lot, it's gorgeous. So, we are gonna employ some of the rock techniques that I showed you last week and we're gonna see how it does with that. So, let's do this. Okay, so today we have a plethora of art supplies to go through, which is a great word. But anyway, um, for paper we have Baohong Academy, and that is their student grade paper. It's cold pressed surface, and it is 300 GSM, which is 140 pound. It is 100% cotton. And if you watched my video on watercolor paper a while back, um, I did mention this paper as being a really good alternative and much less expensive than Saunders Waterford or Arches or any of those guys, and it's still a really great paper. So um, I thought I would give a demo on that today and show you what it acts like. So we've got that. It's um, on a block, so it doesn't need stretching. On my brushes here, I'll show you the sizes. I'm not going to mention the brands. It'll be in the description, but use whatever brand you have. This is a zero, a six, an eight, and a 12 round. This is a half inch flat, a, a full inch flat. This is just a regular old toothbrush, only don't use it for your teeth afterwards because, you know, toxic. This is a one inch hockey brush. This is a regular old X-Acto knife. This is the paint that we're gonna use today is Windsor & Newton Professional Series. I'm also using the Windsor & Newton Designers gouache in white for some details at the end. This is a store card that I've cut in half. You could use a deactivated credit card or whatever. And then we have uh, just a regular spray bottle. Starting out with mixing color, so I've got cobalt blue here and I add cadmium free orange which is the complementary of blue to gray that down just a little bit. Then I do Prussian blue and also add the same orange to it, but then a little bit more Prussian blue afterwards because I got carried away with the orange. Sometimes that happens. Then I make a weak mix of burnt umber and Payne's gray and then add a little bit of yellow ochre. That's just for the sand mixture here. And then I take Burnt Umber and Payne's Gray and make that a bit more saturated and darker for the rocks. And then I mix also, surprise, surprise, Burnt Umber and Payne's Gray again, but make this a darker, even darker still mix and then add extra Payne's Gray in it to make it grayer. Then I go back to the other mix and make it a little bit darker because I realized it needed to be a little bit more darker but brown. And then at the end, we add in some indigo blue. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna start with the sky here. So I wet this down with clean water and a flat brush and start dropping in that cobalt blue mixture. But I realized it got a little bit streaky because I was using my number 12 round brush. And so I came back in with a hockey brush to smooth it out a little bit and then I bring in a one inch flat brush with clean water to lift out some of these wispy little clouds here. I've let that sky dry and now I'm coming back in and wetting the ocean area so that I can start dropping in color for the ocean. Now that the whole area is wet, I begin dropping in Prussian blue and I'm leaving some areas lighter and making some darker so that it's got some variation in tone. And then when I come up to the sand area, I am making that lighter so that there's a smoother transition from that into the sand. And then I begin dropping in indigo blue to add some more details and, and more variation in the color here. 
while this entire area is still wet I'm working quickly to get the sand mixture in there so that we can have a nice meld between the sand and the sea towards the sea where it meets I am actually making the sand a little bit darker because you know it's wet there so it will appear darker especially closer to the rock I'm making that darker and then I put in a little bit of texture splattering that texture into the sand and then I begin coming back in with some more indigo blue while this ocean area is still a little bit wet. I have allowed all of this to dry and now I'm coming back in and wetting just the rock by itself so that I can start dropping in some color. Here I begin dropping in my medium brown color into the darker areas of this rock. And now I'm gonna add in some yellow ochre on the, the highlights of the area and then also come back in with the darkest of the mixes and go down to the darkest shadowy areas of the rock. I'm gonna let all of that color rest for just a minute. And so I'm coming back into the water area and I'm doing these little rocks that are spaced out in the ocean. Now for the fun part. I'm taking the rounded edge of a store card that I've cut in half. This one was a Starbucks gold card, as if you needed to know that. But anyway, I am scraping the highlights of this rock, which all that's gonna do is gonna add some texture that you wouldn't be able to necessarily paint and it's gonna make it look a little bit more like rock. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more texture into the sand area by using the medium brown and using a toothbrush to splatter it onto the sand. Now I'm taking my darkest of the mixtures with my number eight round brush and I am adding in the shadow areas of this rock. Part of this rock is so dark it's almost black, so I really am just coming in pretty dark on the shadow areas. I'm also adding a little bit of that darkest mixture to the shadow side of these little rocks and now I'm adding in these larger rocks that are kind of strewn along the beach here. Now that the paint on these smaller rocks has rested for just a second, I'm going back in and I am scraping that texture into those rocks as well. I'm noticing that the area that's closest to the sand here in the ocean is just a little bit too light because I know that eventually we're going to add some sea foam and there needs to be some contrast. So I actually come back in with my spray bottle right here and I'm wetting that area and start adding in some more of the Prussian blue to make it darker so that there'll be some contrast. At the top where I didn't get it wet, I'm actually using some clean water to just meld that into the dry part as well. While this ocean area is still wet, I'm adding a little bit of that brown close to the rocks so that there can be just a little bit of a reflection showing here. With that same color brown on my brush, I'm turning my brush on its side and I'm doing a little bit of dry brushing here to add a little bit of texture to the sand. And then with a little bit lighter of a color on my brush, I'm doing the same thing but up in the lighter sand and I'm dry brushing there to just give the sand a little bit of texture. There's a little box up here that looks like maybe a lifeguard stand or something, so I'm adding the first wash of the little turquoise color for that. And now I'm adding some indigo blue here and some lines to create kind of a distant wave sort of texture here.
And now I use my trusty half inch flat brush and some clean water and I lift out some highlights on the distant sea. I've mixed up a more saturated version of my darkest of browns and I'm adding in the deepest darkest shadows on this rock and also adding in cracks and craggy bits and any other kind of rocky texture that I want to at this time. I kind of think craggy bits would make a great band name after I've said it out loud. Never mind, that could mean something really bad in different countries. I don't know. Just adding a little bit of darker turquoise on this lifeguard stand here for some shadow. And now it's time to bust out the trusty X-Acto knife. And we just start scratching off the top layer of this paint and making sure not to cut too deeply so that you cut the paper or damage it too much. But we just scratch off a layer so that we can get some of this white surf or the foamy areas of the ocean going here. must warn you it does take quite a lot of time energy and patience to do the foamy area like this I mean it takes a bit just to get enough of the paint scratched off in order to be able to see the white through the paper and you have to be so careful to not cut through the paper that it really just takes quite a lot of energy that being said I think I'm gonna just intensely speed this up really quick because I can't see that you really want to sit here and watch me do this because at this point I'm scratching 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 so much that I might as well be a 1980s DJ if you know what I mean. And now comes the inevitable bit. Every time I do this I will get sick of scratching and I will grab my white gouache and do the larger chunks of the white because it just takes so dadgum long. I mean and it's really not a bad idea to use gouache for that anyway. You can use the scratching for the more delicate areas and the white gouache for the chunkier areas and it still works out really nicely. And then I grab my teeny tiny zero sized round brush and I start to do the railings and the legs on the lifeguard stand. And then I decide to grab my X-Acto knife again and go back to scratching because I just can't leave it alone, can I? A tiny little bit more detail on the lifeguard stand and I think that'll do it. And here's the finished product signed and dried and tape removed and ready to go. And there you have it, a nice lovely calm beach scene. 
where you can close your eyes and totally pretend that you're there. Kind of like I'm doing right now. Yep. Anyways, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all of that fun stuff because that is literally how this channel gets to grow. Thanks for watching. I will see you again next time.